assalamu alaikum welcome to lecture number 12 of the course on statistics and probability you will recall that in the last lecture i was discussing with you the concept of dispersion in particular i discussed with you the mean deviation and the standard deviation also towards the end of the lecture we discussed the relative measure called the coefficient of variation today i will continue with the concept of the standard deviation and i will convey to you a very interesting and important inequality called the chebyshev's inequality students this inequality and the empirical rule another important rule that i will discuss this will help us understand the significance and the role of the standard deviation in interpreting properly the dispersion or the spread of our data set aapko yaad hoga ke last time humne kafi tafseel ke sath ye baat discuss ki thi ke standard deviation ka aur coefficient of variation ka kya role hai is silsile mein ke agar hum do ya do se zyada data sets ko aap isme compare karna chahe but students we have not uh, focused as much on the question how do we interpret the standard deviation in the case of one single data set the chebyshev's inequality and the empirical rule uh, these are two different ways of answering this particular question to understand this point properly students aisa kijiye ke ek particular data set ko apne zehen mein laiye and try to answer the following questions question 1 how many data values fall within one standard deviation of the mean question 2 how many data values fall within two standard deviations of the mean and question 3 how many data values fall within three standard deviations of the mean students ye maine aapse kya question puche hain aapko yaad hai ki last time maine badi tafseel ke sath aapko ye convey kiya tha ki range quartile deviation mean deviation or standard deviation sab ke sab they can be represented as a horizontal distance that we draw below the x axis a distance which enables us to understand the spread of our distribution agar aap is point ko zehen mein rakhe to in questions ka jawab koi aisa mushkil nahi hai pehla question tha how many data values fall within one standard deviation of the mean iska kya matlab hai very simply i just want you to think that there would be a certain number and a certain proportion of the data values that will be lying between x bar minus s and x bar plus s usi frequency distribution ko aur uski jo curve hai usko zehen mein laiye x bar is in the middle x bar minus s is to the left kyunki jab aap s distance x bar mein se minus karenge to obviously you will uh, as if you will travel backward and you will travel by a distance of one standard deviation to x bar minus s aapki distribution ke shuru mein hoga not in the very beginning but towards the left side or x bar plus s towards the right side and there is a certain amount of data that lies in this range 
Similarly, a certain amount of data will lie between x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s. And similarly, for x bar minus 3s to x bar plus 3s. Now, the question is that we can determine how many ranges are in ranges ke darmiyan kitna amount of data lie karta hai well it's obvious that if we have a particular data set all we have to do is to first of all compute x bar and s and then of course to find all, all these values x bar minus s x bar plus s x bar minus 2s and so on और उसके बाद हम काउंट करेंगे एक्चुअली वी विल काउंट द नंबर ऑफ वैल्यूज दैट आर लाइंग इन द इनसाइड दिस रेंजेस बट स्टूडेंट्स द थ्योरम दैट आई एम वांटिंग टू कन्वे टू यू व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द शेबिशेव्स थ्योरम और द शेबिशेव्स इनइक्वालिटी दिस इज अ थ्योरम दैट प्रोवाइड्स अ जनरल आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन and it is obvious that if we have a general answer which is valid in every situation uh, that is much better so as you now see on the screen the chebyshev's theorem states that for any number k greater than 1 at least 1 minus 1 over k square of the data values fall within k standard deviations of the mean that is within the interval x bar minus ks to x bar plus ks ab is theorem mein do teen baatein bahut important hain pehli cheez ye note kijiye that i said that the number k is a number which is greater than 1 और दूसरी बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट बात ये भी नोट कीजिए दैट आई सेड दैट फॉर एनी नंबर के ग्रेटर देन वन एट लीस्ट वन माइनस वन ओवर के स्क्वायर ऑफ द डेटा वैल्यूज फॉल बिटवीन एक्स बार माइनस के एस टू एक्स बार प्लस के एस यानी ये जो लव्स ये जो दो अल्फाज हैं एट लीस्ट दैट इज वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट आइए इस थेरम को जरा डिटेल में समझने की कोशिश करते हैं जैसा मैंने कहा के इज़ अ नंबर ग्रेटर देन वन सो लेट मी टेक अ वेरी वेरी सिंपल सिंपलेस्ट केस एंड लेट मी टेक के इक्वल टू टू अगर आप के इक्वल टू टू अपने उस एक्सप्रेशन में सब्सटीट्यूट करें वन माइनस वन ओवर के स्क्वायर तो जाहिर है कि 1 minus 1 over 2 square that is 1 minus 1 over 4 and that is equal to 3 over 4 iska matlab ye hua ke hum chebyshev's theorem ko k equal to 2 ke case mein is tarah se padhenge that at least 3/4 of the data values fall between x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s similarly if i put k equal to 3 1 minus 1 over 3 square is equal to 1 minus 1 over 9 and that is 8 over 9 and what i'm saying is that for any data set at least 8 over 9 of the values 8 over 9 proportion of the values falls between x bar minus 3s and x bar plus 3s students ye jo chebyshev's theorem hai this is valid for any data set may it be a sample drawn from a population or may it be an entire population iski jo limitation hai wo ye hai ke it does not provide any information for the case k equal to 1 isliye ke agar aap us expression 1 minus 1 over k square mein k ko 1 ke barabar put kare to saaf zahir hai ke 1 minus 1 over 1 square will be equal to 1 minus 
and that is zero. And we are saying that at least 0% of the data lies between x bar minus s and x bar plus s. And this obviously does not make much sense. Ye jo maine aapko abhi values aapke saath calculate ki, 3 over 4, us case mein when k is equal to 2, and 8 over 9 in the case when k is equal to 3. Zahir hai ke hum isko percentage form mein bhi apne zahen mein bitha sakte hain. And it is easy to remember that at least 75% of the data values will always lie between x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s. And similarly, um, at least 89% of the values will fall between x bar minus 3s and x bar plus 3s. Ye jo 89% maine kaha, ye maine round karke kaha. Varna 8 over 9 is actually a little less. Or students, isi tara aap k ki koi bhi value put karenge greater than 1 and you will get the corresponding figure of the minimum amount of the data that lies in that range. Lekin uh, ek point bada interesting or important is marhale par hai aur wo ye ke in many situations um, the Chebyshev's inequality provides weak information regarding the amount of data values that fall between these ranges. For many data sets, um, the, the ones which would lead to mound shaped approximately symmetrical distributions, students, the actual proportion of data values that lies between x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s, for example, is much greater than 75%. And similarly, the actual proportion of data values which would lie between x bar minus 3s and x bar plus 3s for a mound shaped symmetric distribution, again, that would be much greater than 89%. So, this means ke baas situations to definitely aisi hain jab Chebyshev's inequality or Chebyshev's theorem comes to our rescue because un data sets ki jo distributions hain wo mound shaped symmetric distributions nahi hain aur us case mein Chebyshev inequality ke zariye immediately we are able to ascertain that at least this much data lies in this particular range. Lekin, bohat se aise data sets jin mein hume approximately symmetric hum shaped distribution available hoti hai, we need to do better than the Chebyshev's inequality. And in this regard, I will now convey to you the other rule that I mentioned, the empirical rule. Students, the empirical rule is a kind of a rule of thumb which is valid in the case of symmetric or approximately symmetric hump shaped distributions as I just mentioned. According to this rule, approximately 68% of the measurements will fall within one standard deviation of the mean that is within the interval x bar minus s to x bar plus s. Also, approximately 95% of the measurements will fall within two standard deviations of the mean, that is within the interval x bar minus 2s to x bar plus 2s. Similarly, approximately 100% of the measurements, that is practically all the measurements fall within three standard deviations of the mean, that is within the interval x bar minus 3s to x bar plus 3s. Ye jo maine aap se aakhir mein baat kahi, ke practically all the data lies between 
x bar minus 3 s and x bar plus 3 s. Is ki vajah se students ek bada interesting relation milta hai hume between the range and the standard deviation of a approximately symmetric hump shaped distribution the case that we are discussing at this time. Aapko yaad hai ke range ko humne define kiya tha as the distance between x naught the smallest value and x m the largest. Ab agar hum ye keh rahe hain ke x bar minus 3 s or x bar plus 3 s ke darmiyan taqreeban sara data lie karta hai to iska matlab to yahi nikalta hai na ke x naught corresponds approximately with x bar minus 3 s and x m corresponds approximately with x bar plus 3 s. Iska matlab ye hua ke x naught se leke x m tak sta kitni standard deviations hum travel karenge 3 s to the left of x bar and 3 s to the right of x bar. In other words, 6 standard deviations. And so, the relationship that I am referring to is that for a symmetric or approximately symmetric mound shaped distribution, the range is approximately 6 times the standard deviation. All right. Let us apply this empirical rule to an example. As you now see on the screen, suppose that we have data regarding the percentages of revenues spent on research and development that is R&D by 50 different companies. And suppose that the figures are 13.5%, 9.5%, 8.2%, 6 6.5% and so on. Suppose that we wish to calculate the proportions of these measurements, the proportions that lie within the intervals x bar plus minus s, x bar plus minus 2s and x bar plus minus 3s. In order to do this, of course, the first step will be to find the mean and the standard deviation of this data set. And if we apply the formulae that I have discussed with you in the previous lectures, the mean of this data set comes out to be 8.49 and the standard deviation comes out to be 1.98. Accordingly, x bar minus s comes out to be 6.51 and x bar plus s is 10.47. Now, if we count the number of data values that lie inside this interval, we find that 34 of the 50 measurements, in other words, 68% of the measurements fall between 6.51 and 10.47. Similarly, the interval from x bar minus 2s to x bar plus 2s comes out to be 4.53 to 12.45. And when we count the number of data values that fall in this range, we find that 47 of the 50 measurements, that is 94% of the data values lie in this interval. Finally, the three standard deviation interval around x bar comes out to be 2.55 to 14.43. And we find that 100% of the values lie in this interval. Students, Agar aap in values se frequency distribution banai, histogram draw kare aur frequency curve uske upar superimpose kare, to aap dekhenge ke this distribution is somewhat 
positively skewed. Yani, it is not totally symmetric. In spite of this asymmetry, students, you have noticed that the proportion of data that lies within one standard deviation of the mean is 68 percent. The proportion of data that lies within two standard deviations is 94 percent and the proportion of data that lies within three standard deviations is 100 percent. And isn't it interesting that these proportions are remarkably close to the proportions that I mentioned to you a short while ago as the empirical rule for the case of symmetric distributions. So, kehne ka maqsad ye hai ke slight departure from symmetry does not matter and this empirical rule gives us a very good way of judging the amounts of data that would lie within specified intervals of our data set. Or aye, ab ek dafa phir Shebi Shev's inequality ki baat karte hain. Aapko yaad hai na that according to this theorem, at least 75 percent of the data values will fall between x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s for any data set. Or is data set me? 94 percent of the values are falling in this interval. So, there is no contradiction. Obviously, 94 percent is much greater than 75 percent. Isi tara, Shebyshev's inequality ki ru se, at least 89 percent of the data values should have fallen between x bar minus 3s and x bar plus 3s or is data set ke andar, 100 percent of the values are falling in this interval. So, there is no contradiction, but you will realize that the fact that this particular data set is approximately symmetric, rather I should say slightly positively skewed, but not extremely skewed. The information that we are getting from the empirical rule in this situation is more than what we get from the Chebyshev's inequality. Lekin, main ek dafa phir repeat karungi ke un data sets mein jaha pe approximate symmetry aapko nahi mil rahi, Chebyshev's inequality is a useful tool to establish the proportions of data, our data set that lie in specified intervals. Let us define this one more time. As you now see on the screen, the Chebyshev's theorem states that given a set of n observations, x1, x2, so on up to xn on the variable x, the probability is at least 1 minus 1 over k square that x will take on a value within k standard deviations of the mean of the set of observations where k is greater than 1. Ab yaha par ek aur baat note karne ki hai. Aap ne dekha ke is martaba maine is theorem ko is tarah se state kiya that the probability is at least 1 minus 1 over k square that so and so will happen. Yani, Shebyshev's theorem ko aap probabilistic terms mein bhi uh, define kar sakte hain aur state kar sakte hain. Students, pandar mein lecture ke baad jab hum probability theory ka aagaz karenge to us vakt hum is theorem ko bhi probabilistic terms mein define karenge. Filhaal, aap isi baat pe concentrate karein jis tarah se maine aapko aaj is ki interpretation di hai. Let us consolidate this idea by considering one more example. Suppose that a set of data has a mean of 150 and a standard deviation of 
25. Now multiplying 25 by 2 we get 50 and hence we can say that we expect at least 75% of the data values to lie between 150 minus 50 that is 100 and 150 plus 50 that is 200. By similar calculations we find that we can expect at least 89% of the values to lie between 75 and 225 and at least 96% to lie between 25 and 275. Ye to hua hamara ek data set. Now suppose we have another data set whose mean is exactly the same as before that is 150 but whose standard deviation is not 25 but 10. Applying Chebyshev's theorem for this particular set of data we can expect at least 75% of the values to lie between 130 and 170, at least 89% to lie between 120 and 180 and at least 96% to lie between 100 and 200. Ye jo 96% ka figure hai, this is obtained by substituting the value k equal to 5 in the expression 1 minus 1 over k square. Students, agar hum in dono data sets ko compare kare, to that will enable us to understand the difference in the two data sets with respect to dispersion. As you now see on the screen, the comparison of the two data sets is that for the percentage of data at least 75%, at least 75% of the data values of the data set number 1 lie between 100 and 200, whereas at least 75% of the data values of data set number 2 lie between 130 and 170. Ab in dono intervals ko visualize karne ki koshish ki jiye. Pehle data set ke liye 100 to 200. Dusre data set ke liye 130 to 170. So you find that the interval for the second data set is narrower than the interval for the first data set. Or Shebyshev's theorem ki ru se hum ye keh rahe hain ke at least 75% of the data values lie in a narrower interval for that data set whose standard deviation was only 10 compared with the interval that we have for that data set whose standard deviation was 25 which is much more than 10. I hope that you have understood the point. If your standard deviation is a smaller number, your interval is going to be narrower and if your standard deviation is bigger, your interval will naturally be wider. The graph that you now see on the screen illustrates this point for the case of the symmetric distribution. Agar aapka, aapki mean value 150 hai for both the distributions, lekin standard deviation for one distribution is much more than the standard deviation for the other, then the interval for the first one that will contain a certain proportion of the values is much longer than the corresponding interval for the second one. Students, we have 
स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन की डिस्कशन की और लुबे लुबाब सारी डिस्कशन का ये कि ख्वा हम शबी शेफ रूल के मुताबिक बात करें ख्वा हम इम्पेरिकल रूल के मुताबिक बात करें जो सिर्फ उस सिचुएशन में वैलिड है जब हमारी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हम शेप्ड अप्रॉक्सीमेटली सिमेट्रिक हो दोनों हवालों से बात का जो जिस्ट है वो यही है दैट इफ द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इज स्मॉल आवर इंटरवल कंटेनिंग अ सर्टन प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ द डेटा वैल्यूज विल बी अ स्मॉलर इंटरवल कंपेयर्ड विद द सिचुएशन when the standard deviation is large i would like to encourage you to study this particular concept in further detail aap jitna zyada iska mutalia karenge aur jitne zyada questions karenge aur practice karenge students you will feel at home with this concept and the most important point that you will be able to understand much better the role and the significance of the standard deviation as a measure of dispersion by the way ye lapse dispersion maine 20 25 50 martaba istemal kiya hoga aapne gaur kiya ke in sare measures ko measure of dispersion kyun kehte hain the answer is very simple obviously the word dispersion comes from the word disperse और जब आप कहते हैं कि डिस्पर्स हो जाइए तो आप कह रहे हैं कि फैल जाइए यहाँ से हट जाइए और इसमें फैलाव का कॉन्सेप्ट आता है एंड आफ्टर ऑल व्हाट इज़ अ मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्जन इट इज़ अ मेजर ऑफ स्प्रेड और द स्कैटर ऑफ योर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टूडेंट्स डिस्पर्जन के बारे में तो हमने तफसील के साथ बात कर ली द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू इज कॉल्ड द फाइव नंबर समरी अब जबकि हमने किसी भी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के बारे में तीन बहुत अहम बातें डिस्कस कर ली हैं और समझ ली हैं द सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी ऑफ आवर डेटा सेट द स्प्रेड ऑफ आवर डेटा सेट एंड द शेप of our data set then we are in a position to summarize the important features of our data set through what is called the five number summary the concept of the five number summary of a data set comes under the broad topic of exploratory data analysis and as you now see on the screen the five number summary of any data set consists of x0 q1 median q3 and xm students aapne gaur kiya ke is five number summary mein humne dono extreme values yani x0 aur xm aur teeno quartiles ko involve kiya hai yani q1 q3 and the median of course you will recall that the median and the second quartile are one and the same thing students ye jo teeno quartiles hain inki jo position hai relative to each other and relative to the end points this enables us to determine the skewness of our distribution इस बात को समझने के लिए आइए हम स्टेप बाय स्टेप दो तीन बातों पे गौर करते हैं इफ आवर डेटा सेट इज परफेक्टली सिमेट्रिकल द फॉलोइंग वुड बी ट्रू नंबर वन द डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम क्यू वन टू द मीडियन वुड बी एग्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द मीडियन टू the third quartile as you now see on the screen the distances on both sides of the median are exactly equal secondly the distance from x not to q1 
would be exactly equal to the distance from q3 to xm. As you now see on the screen, the distances on the right side and the left side are exactly the same. And the third point to note is that in the case of an absolutely symmetric distribution, the median, the mid quartile range and the mid range, they are all equal to each other and also exactly equal to the arithmetic mean as you now see on the screen. On the other hand, for non-symmetric distributions, the rules that I just mentioned are no longer valid. As you now see on the screen, in case of right skewed distributions, the distance from the third quartile to xm greatly exceeds the distance from x0 to q1. Also, in case of a right skewed distribution, the median is less than the mid quartile range and the mid quartile range is less than the mid range. Or agar hum left skewed distribution yani negatively skewed distribution ki baat kare, to situation jo hai that will be just the opposite of the situation that I just mentioned for the right skewed distribution. So students, yehi wajah hai ke five number summary jo hai, which includes the minimum value x0, the maximum value xm and the three quartiles q1, q2 and q3. It enables us to determine the skewness of our distribution and also the spread of the distribution because after all, you do remember that the distance from x0 to xm is the range and the range is the first and foremost measure of dispersion. Let me explain this concept to you with the help of an example. Suppose that a study is being conducted regarding the annual costs incurred by students attending public versus private colleges and universities in the United States of America. In particular, suppose that for exploratory purposes, our sample consists of 10 universities whose athletic programs are members of the Big Ten Conference. The annual costs incurred for tuition fees, room and board at the 10 schools belonging to Big Ten Conference are for Indiana University $15.6,000, for Michigan State 17.0, for Ohio State University $15.2,000 and so on. In order to state the five number summary of this particular data set, students, the first step will be to arrange these values in ascending order. So, as you now see on the screen, when we arrange these values, the smallest value comes out to be 13.0 and the largest 23.1. Also, when we do the relevant computations, we find that the median for this data set is $15.3,000. The first quartile is $14.9,000 and the third quartile comes out to be $16.4,000. Therefore, the five number summary of this particular data set comes out to be x0 equal to 13.0, q1 equal to 14.9, x tilde 15.3, Q3 equal to 16.4 and XM equal to 
$23.1 thousand dollars. If I apply the rules that I mentioned a short while ago, students, we find that the distribution of this particular data set is positively skewed. So you find that the five number summary is a simple and yet very effective way of determining the shape of your distribution without actually drawing the graph of your distribution. This brings us to the end of today's lecture. Next time, I will continue with the concept of the five number summary and I will proceed to another very interesting concept and that is called the box and whisker plot. Until next time, I wish you the best in your studies of the subject and I would like to encourage you to attempt as many exercise questions as you can easily do. Best of luck and Allah Hafiz.